Well, ice fishing season is upon us, but don't put away that boat just yet. Hey, I'm Adam Eagle. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, we came up to Flaming Gorge where there's still some open water. We're going to talk about uh, some of the upcoming fishing tournaments, whether it's done by boat or through the hard deck. We got a few coming up, including the you know the bourbon bass that's been around for 15 or so years, and the mac attack that's just a few weeks away. And we're going to talk to some biologists and the guys here from Buckboard. We're going to try and get a little few more secrets from uh, them on how to catch lake trout. I know a lot of people struggle with that species, and so we're going to go hop on the boat. Looks like the guys are ready. These right here, we tucked into that little cove. Are we going right back to yeah, where we go. were? Let's go try it. There are too many small lake trout at Flaming Gorge. It's something biologists have been telling us for more than a decade. There's fish. I know. He's all over you. I think everybody that fishes kokanee up here knows the last two years were tough. You know, tough fishing up here, just not a lot of kokanee. But we're really concerned that the lake trout have overwhelmed the kokanee, the recruitment. Not lake trout are out there eating the 16 to 20 inch kokanee. It's the lake trout that are out there eating the three, four, five, six inch kokanee, the recruitment we need. And it's these little guys. That one's thinner. Get him! Get him! Get him. Oh they don't subsist on kokanee, but they opportunistically eat them. So if each of these little guys eat, let's say, 10 kokanee, and there's 200,000 of them out here, they can eat through not only what we stock to help supplement the wild kokanee out here, but they can eat through the wild recruitment. It's not the trophy fish that are causing this problem. It's these, these smaller fish. Oh, yeah, just a glow cast. Cast yeah, right. with two metal beads. So it goes ding a ling a ling. <laughs> we have absolutely no concern that we can over harvest them with anglers. There's always going to be some of those fish with the genetics to break through to that 28 inches and recruit to an adult and survive for the next 20, 30 years. Digging, finally got one. But we need harvest on these little ones. Double, Double duck. This is what we're talking about. When they're hot, they're hot. When they're not, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you're talking about. That's a puppy. Oh, that's Lots of those. And the thing that's really scary, a little fish like that, mainly eating zooplankton, um, but a kokanee gets in its way that's three, four inches long, it's going to grab it, and it's going to be in its stomach. These lucky lakers that TJ and Tony with Buckboard Marina are catching are not going to be eaten, they're going to be tagged. The goal is to catch and tag 1,000 small lake trout. So far, Utah and Wyoming biologists have tagged about 500. We're trying to generate a population estimate on the small lake trout um, in the reservoir, generally what everybody refers to as pups. So we're focusing on the fish less than 28 inches, but really the majority of the fish we're tagging are about less than 23 inches. That's the big group of fish we have. So we're gonna tag them with a Floyd tag. Now we're gonna get a length. Okay, 19.6. All these tags have unique numbers, so we know how long these fish are and exactly where they were released. Um, of the tags we're putting out, about 20% of them are worth $50. So the tags have uh, Wyoming Game Fish, Green River Regional Office phone number. Catch a tag fish, harvest it, either call us and tell us the tag number or bring that tag into the office and find out if it's worth $50 for you. And it's also really important data for us. So if you catch one, we need to know about it so we can better understand the population out here. So there's money to be made when you catch a tag lake trout, whether it's one of these 500 tagged lakers tagged by Wyoming Game and Fish in the Utah DWR, or tags that can be caught during this year's Mac Attack tournament that we'll tell you about next. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. You know, not a lot of people have a boat to come up to Flaming Gorge in the winter, or even if you do have a boat, not a lot of us are crazy enough to take our boats out on the gorge in the winter. That's the great thing about this time of year. You can always come and hit the hard deck. And this year, the ice is off to a great start. That's where we've right there. caught them before. So it's right there. That's the structure. Five, six inches. Not too bad. No. I feel pretty safe. Yep, let's go. We're on a 45, 50 degree slope that's dropping right into the river channels right over here. And there should be lake trout that are 
associated with the river channel, but coming up on this slope to forage. So we're gonna try and see if they're not here, get some cotton. That's a nice black spork arm. Confluence is just right there, just down from the confluence for at least a half, three quarters of a mile, three inches of ice with the cold weather that's coming next week. That's gonna be five, six here in a week. We're into lake trout habitat, people. It's just uh, gonna be a good time. These are early ice, got five, six, seven inches. Be careful, but come take advantage of it. Early ice is the time to hit these lake trout. Is uh, what we'll do is chase the leading edge of ice down reservoir, not like right on the leading edge, but that new five inches or so down reservoir and just stay on the fish where they're really active. Oh, dang it. Second time is a charm. Second time. Come to your home. I like the two, isn't it? Nice. Oh yeah. Rob is tagging these fish for their population study as well. And there's other tagged fish that are also worth some money, and those can be caught and redeemed during the Mac Attack tournament scheduled for January 14th and 15th. There you go. Off to your home. They're tagging fish. They've got a lot of fish tag. They have prizes. We have our prizes. It's a. It, it'll be a good thing, and it's you know we need to really really start doing something for the for the fishery, and there's the only way to really do it through sportsmen. Buckboard Marina is sponsoring the Mac Attack. They'll have prize and cash drawings during the tournament, where they'll be giving back 90% of the entry fees back to the participants. So we have probably we tagged 300, and so we've caught over the years looking like a Laker. We've caught you know I think roughly about 30 fish. The Laker. So there's 270 odd tags out. Nice. All them tags, there's a pink one, a green one, and an orange one. All them tags will be paid out at $250 during the tournament. And it's only a $50 entry. And we have the, you know, the heaviest team weights, the heaviest burbot. We have a ton of prizes to pay, uh, different divisions to pay out. The burbot are still an issue. So yeah, we, we decided to put the biggest burbot category. We have a, a daily payout for the burbot each day. Because when we're in here fishing like this, like in the depth of water we are, it, they go hand in hand. So you could, you could catch either or. Lake trout can be tough to catch. These guys say you need to know what structure you're fishing. And for that, you might need a nap. The couple tips I can tell people, and I don't care if you're fishing out of a boat or you're fishing on the ice, Get Navionics. Navionics is an app that you can put on your phone. It shows the bathymetric map, map of the reservoir, so it shows all the structure, and you can boat right to, walk right to structure. So get that so that you know that you're fishing the right habitats. When I go ice fishing, I don't have a hut, because I don't want to get comfortable in the hut with my heater and fit, look at a hole all day that there's no fish under. I ice fish. I go out to the structures I expect fish to be. I check, I wait for 20 minutes. If I don't see any fish, I'm moving again. Nice. Another one for the Mac attack. Next structure, next structure. It might move three or four times. Yeah. Finally find that little pocket where the fish are and just direct them. So the tournament's just around the corner. Where can people find information, Tony? On our website. You can go to Buckboard Marina at Flaming Gorge. Okay. And uh, it's on our website. And, okay. and Facebook too, is they, they put a lot of stuff out on Facebook, so. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here at Flaming Gorge. Well, the sun is going down. Well, it's pretty much down. We're going to switch species, but the same, uh, pretty much the same technique, little different area, different species though. Rob's trying to get ready for the burbot bash. So we're just, we're at the end of a series of cliffs on Flaming Gorge where the topography under the water is, is more gradual, it's not the vertical cliffs. The burbot are going to be in the cliffs during the day to avoid light. Then they're going to roll out of those uh, cracks and, and little pockets that they're in and start foraging on the end of the cliff. So we're going to take advantage of that and get some fish caught tonight. Just use lures of glow. I like the Yamamoto grubs because they're, they're simple. They hold the glow really well. Same thing as pups, but now we're switching to the elusive, very elusive burbot. <laughs> we'll get them. Heavy spoons that have glow paint on them work really well. Anything that glows and then for the lake trout we were using a small piece of sucker meat. For the burbot we're going to go a little bit bigger, inch, inch and a half long, about a half inch wide. Oh look, it's an eel pad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a slime bow. This is giant. 
I told you, Adam. It, it, it's just. Hey now. They're coming around. They're, they're, you know, we fish on this boat. You catch a lot of big fish. Bring it up to the window. Bring it up to the window. Oh, you got a big one too. That's how we do it. In three hours. <laughs> the guys put 18 oh, burbot in the boat. Time to tag. We're tagging these pretty much exclusively for the burbot bash so that it's one of the prize categories. Uh, pretty uh, good payout. Tag number 450084. Rob hopes to tag between 50 and 100 burbot for the bash. There's also hundreds of tags in burbot from previous years. Every year it seems two or three tags are caught during the bash, which pays out thousands of dollars for those that catch a tag or those that catch the smallest, biggest, and even the most. We figured out, I think last year, we hit over 50,000 burbot that had been removed exclusively during the, well, during the burbot derbies, the several derbies, but it was like over 36,000 that were exclusively removed during the bash. The tagging has helped biologists better understand burbot and their movements. Rob also believes that anglers are having an impact on the invasive burbot population here at the gorge. Got him that time. <laughs> the numbers are definitely down. That's good. That's what we're looking for. We're not going to get rid of them. <laughs> Bringing them through the window. We're also seeing the lake trout that basically grew up with burbot are finally starting to, there's more burbot showing up in their stomachs, which is good. Well, come out and experience the Mac attack. It's a good time. Yeah, it's going to be great. It, it, this should be a phenomenal fishing year. I mean, it really should be yeah. with the water going down. And I mean, it should be good ice good. conditions. The ice is beautiful. And like I say, we'll be the structure, the, the keys of hunting them down and finding them. Yeah. We will be putting that out there. So for cool. People. Well, get out here. You know, if you want to come learn too how to catch these fish, give old TJ a call, call at BMF. Uh, Outfitters, he's uh, he's pretty handy. He's gotten pretty good over the past couple years. Mm, yeah. yeah, I'm Adam Eco, KSL Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.